gradient of the 747 to 400. After several variants were proposed but later abandoned, some industry observers became skeptical of new aircraft proposals from Boeing. However, in early 2004, Boeing announced tentative plans for the 747 advance that were eventually adopted. Similar in nature to the 747X, the stretched 747 advanced used technology from the 787 to modernize the design and its systems. The 747 remained the largest passenger airliner in service until the Airbus A380 began airline service in 2007. On the 14th of November, 2005, Boeing announced it was launching the 747 Advanced as the Boeing 747-8. The last 747-400s were completed in 2009. As of 2011, most orders of the 747-8 were for the freighter variant. On the 8th of February, 2010, the 747-8 freighter made its maiden flight. The first delivery of the 747-8 went to Cargo Lux in 2011. The first 747-8 intercontinental passenger variant was delivered to Lufthansa on the 5th of May, 2012. The 1,500 TH Boeing 747 was delivered in June 2014 to Lufthansa. In January 2016, Boeing stated it was reducing 747 to 8 production to 6 per year beginning in September 2016, incurring a $569 million post-tax charge against its fourth quarter 2015 profits. At the end of 2015, the company had 20 orders outstanding. On the 29th of January 2016, Boeing announced that it had begun the preliminary work on the modifications to a commercial 747-8 for the next Air Force One presidential aircraft, then expected to be operational by 2020. On the 12th of July, 2016, Boeing announced that it had finalized an order from Volga Dnepr Group for 2747-8 freighters valued at $7.58 billion, tilde $9.44 billion in 2023, at list prices. Four aircraft were delivered beginning in 2012. Volga Dnepr Group is the parent of three major Russian air freight carriers Volga Dnepr Airlines, Airbridge Cargo Airlines and Atran Airlines. The new 747-8 freighters would replace Airbridge Cargo's current 747-400 aircraft and expand the airline's fleet and will be acquired through a mix of direct purchases and leasing over the next six years, Boeing said. End of production, edit. On the 27th of July, 2016, in its quarterly report to the Securities and Exchange Commission, Boeing discussed the potential termination of 747 production due to insufficient demand and market for the aircraft. With a firm order backlog of 21 aircraft and a production rate of 6 per year, program accounting had been reduced to 1,555 aircraft. In October 2016, UPS Airlines ordered 14-8 Fs to add capacity, along with 14 options, which it took in February 2018 to increase the total to 28-8 Fs on order. The backlog then stood at 25 aircraft, though several of these were orders from airlines that no longer intended to take delivery. On the 2nd of July, 2020, it was reported that Boeing planned to end 747 production in 2022 upon delivery of the remaining jets on order to UPS and the Volga Dnepr Group due to low demand. On the 29th of July, 2020, 
Boeing confirmed that the final 747 would be delivered in 2022 as a result of current market dynamics and outlook stemming from the COVID-19 pandemic, according to CEO David Calhoun. The last aircraft, a 747-8F4 Atlas Air registered N863GT, rolled off the production line on 6 December, 2022, and was delivered on 31 January, 2023. Boeing hosted an event at the Everett factory for thousands of workers as well as industry executives to commemorate the delivery. Design, Edit for design details of a particular generation, see Boeing 747 to 400, 747 to 8, and 747 SP. The Boeing 747 is a large, wide-body, two-aisle airliner with four wing-mounted engines. Its wings have a high sweep angle of 37.5 degrees for a fast efficient cruise speed of Mach 0.84 to 0.88, depending on the variant. The sweep also reduces the wingspan, allowing the 747 to use existing hangars. Its seating capacity is over 366 with a 3-4-3 seat arrangement, a cross-section of three seats, an aisle, four seats, another aisle, and three seats in economy class and a 232 layout in first class on the main deck. The upper deck has a 33 seat arrangement in economy class and a 22 layout in first class. Raised above the main deck, the cockpit creates a hump. This raised cockpit allows front loading of cargo on freight variants. The upper deck behind the cockpit provides space for a lounge and forward slash or extra seating. The stretched upper deck became available as an alternative on the 747-100B variant and later as standard beginning on the 747-300. The upper deck was stretched more on the 747-8. The 747 cockpit roof section also has an escape hatch from which crew can exit during the events of an emergency if they cannot do so through the cabin. The 747S maximum takeoff weight ranges from 735,000 pounds, 333 T, for the minus 100 to 970,000 pounds, 440 T, for the minus 8. Its range has increased from 5,300 nautical miles, 9,800 kilometers. 6,100 mi, on the minus 100 to 8,000 nautical miles, 15,000 kilometers, 9,200 mi, on the dash 8i. The 747 has redundant structures along with four redundant hydraulic systems and four main landing gears each with four wheels. These provide a good spread of support on the ground and safety in case of tire blowouts. The main gear are redundant so that landing can be performed on two opposing landing gears if the others are not functioning properly. The 747 also has split control surfaces and was designed with sophisticated triple slotted flaps that minimize landing speeds and allow the 747 to use standard length runways. For transportation of spare engines. The 747 can accommodate a non-functioning fifth pod engine under the aircraft's port wing between the inner functioning engine and the fuselage. The fifth engine mount point is also used by Virgin Orbit's Launcher 1 program to carry an orbital class rocket to cruise altitude where it is deployed. Operational History, Edit after the aircraft's introduction with Panam in 1970, other airlines that had bought the 747 to stay competitive began to put their own 747s into service. Boeing estimated that half of the early 747 sales were to airlines desiring the aircraft's long range rather than its payload capacity. While the 747 had the lowest potential operating cost per seat, 
This could only be achieved when the aircraft was fully loaded. Costs per seat increased rapidly as occupancy declined. A moderately loaded 747, one with only 70% of its seats occupied, used more than 95% of the fuel needed by a fully occupied 747. Nonetheless, many flag carriers purchased the 747 due to its prestige even if it made no sense economically to operate. During the 1970s and 1980s, over 30 regularly scheduled 747s could often be seen at John F. Kennedy International Airport. The recession of 1969-1970, despite having been characterized as relatively mild, greatly affected Boeing. For the year and a half after September 1970, it only sold two 747s in the world both to Irish flag carrier Aer Lingus. No 747s were sold to any American carrier for almost three years. When economic problems in the US and other countries after the 1973 oil crisis led to reduced passenger traffic, several airlines found they did not have enough passengers to fly the 747 economically and they replaced them with the smaller and recently introduced McDonnell Douglas DC-10 and Lockheed L-1011 Tristar Tri-J wide bodies, and later the 767 and a 300 forward slash a 310 twin jets. Having tried replacing coach seats on its 747S with piano bars in an attempt to attract more customers, American Airlines eventually relegated its 747s to cargo service and in 1983 exchanged them with Panem for smaller aircraft. Delta Airlines also removed its 747s from service after several years. Later, Delta acquired 747s again in 2008 as part of its merger with Northwest Airlines. Although it retired the Boeing 747-400 fleet in December 2017. International flights bypassing traditional hub airports and landing at smaller cities became more common throughout the 1980s, thus eroding the 747's original market. Many international carriers continued to use the 747 on Pacific routes. In Japan, 747S on domestic routes were configured to carry nearly the maximum passenger capacity. Variants, edit. The 747-100 with a range of 4,620 nautical miles, 8,556 kilometers, was the original variant launched in 1966. The 747-200 soon followed, with its launch in 1968. The 747-300 was launched in 1980 and was followed by the 747-400 in 1985. Ultimately, the 747-8 was announced in 2005. Several versions of each variant have been produced and many of the early variants were in production simultaneously. The International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, classifies variants using a shortened code formed by combining the model number and the variant designator, for example B7414 or minus 100 models. 747-100, edit. The first 747-100s were built with six upper deck windows, three per side, to accommodate upstairs lounge areas. Later, as airlines began to use the upper deck for premium passenger seating instead of lounge space, Boeing offered an upper deck with ten windows on either side as an option. Some early 100s were retrofitted with the new configuration. The Minus 100 was equipped with Pratt and with Neej 89D3 engines. No freighter version of this model was developed, but many 747-100s were converted into freighters as 747-100, SF. 
the first 747-100 SF was delivered to Flying Tiger Line in 1974. A total of 168 747-100s were built, 167 were delivered to customers, while Boeing kept the prototype, City of Everett. In 1972, its unit cost was US dollar 24M, 174.8M today. 747SR, edit. Responding to requests from Japanese airlines for a high-capacity aircraft to serve domestic routes between major cities, Boeing developed the 747SR as a short-range version of the 747-100 with lower fuel capacity and greater payload capability. With increased economy class seating, up to 498 passengers could be carried in early versions and up to 550 in later models. The 747SR had an economic design life objective of 52,000 flights during 20 years of operation, compared to 24,600 flights in 20 years for the standard 747. The initial 747SR model, the Dash 100SR, had a strengthened body structure and landing gear to accommodate the added stress accumulated from a greater number of takeoffs and landings. Extra structural support was built into the wings, fuselage, and the landing gear along with a 20% reduction in fuel capacity. The initial order for the Dash 100SR4 aircraft for Japan Airlines. JAL, later Japan Airlines, was announced on the 30th of October, 1972, rollout occurred on the 3rd of August, 1973, and the first flight took place on the 31st of August, 1973. The type was certified by the FAA on the 26th of September, 1973, with the first delivery on the same day. The Dash 100SR entered service with JAL, the type's sole customer, on the 7th of October, 1973, and typically operated flights within Japan. Seven Dash 100SRs were built between 1973 and 1975, each with a 520,000 pound. 240T, Nto and Pratt earned with Nij 89D7A engines derated to 43,000 pounds force, 190 kn, of thrust. Following the Dash 100 SR, Boeing produced the Dash 100 BSR, a 747 SR variant with increased takeoff weight capability. Debuting in 1978, the Dash 100 BSR also incorporated structural modifications for a high cycle to flying hour ratio. A related standard Dash 100 B model debuted in 1979. The Dash 100 BSR first flew on the 3rd of November 1978, with first delivery to all Nippon Airways (ANA) on the 21st of December 1978. A total of 20-100 BSRs were produced for ANA and JAL. The Dash 100 BSR had a 600,000 pounds, 270 T, NTO and was powered by the same JT9D7 or General Electric CF6-45 engines used on the Dash 100 SR. ANA operated this variant on domestic Japanese routes with 455 or 456 seats until retiring its last aircraft in March 2006. In 1986, two Dash 100 BSR suit models featuring the stretched upper deck, suit, of the Minus 300, were produced for JAL. The type's maiden flight occurred on the 26th of February, 1986, with FAA certification and first delivery on the 24th of March, 1986. JAL operated the Dash 100 BSR suit with 563 seats on domestic routes until their retirement in the third quarter of 2006. While only two Dash 100 BSR suits were produced, in theory, 
standard dash 100 BS can be modified to the suit certification. Overall, 29 Boeing 747 SRs were built. 747-100B, edit. The 747-100B model was developed from the 100SR, using its stronger airframe and landing gear design. The type had an increased fuel capacity of 48,070 US gal, 182,000 L, allowing for a 5,000 nautical mile. 9,300 kilometers, 5,800 mi, range with a typical 452 passenger payload, and an increased tow of 750,000 pound, 340 t, was offered. The first Dash 100B order, one aircraft for Iran Air, was announced on the 1st of June, 1978. This version first flew on the 20th of June, 1979, received FAA certification on the 1st of August, 1979, and was delivered the next day. 9-100BS were built, one for Iran Air and eight for Saudi Arabian Airlines. Unlike the original minus 100, the Dash 100B was offered with Pratt and with Nige 89D70. CF6-50, or Rolls-Royce RB211-524 engines. However, only RB211-524, Saudia, and JT9D70, Iran Air, engines were ordered. The last 747-100B, EPIAM was retired by Iran Air in 2014. The last commercial operator of the 747 to 100 and dash 100 B 747 SP edit main article Boeing 747 SP the development of the 747 SP stemmed from a joint request between Pan American World Airways and Iran Air who were looking for a high capacity airliner with enough range to cover Panam's New York Middle Eastern routes and Iran Air's planned Tehran New York route. The Tehran New York route, when launched, was the longest non stop commercial flight in the world. The 747 SP is 48 feet 4 inches, 14.73 m, shorter than the 747 to 100. Fuselage sections were eliminated fore and aft of the wing, and the center section of the fuselage was redesigned to fit mating fuselage sections. The SB's flaps used a simplified single-slotted configuration. The 747 SP, compared to earlier variants, had a tapering of the aft upper fuselage into the empennage, a double-hinged rudder, and longer vertical and horizontal stabilizers. Power was provided by Pratt and Whitney JT9 D7, a forward slash F forward slash J forward slash FW, or Rolls Royce RB211 524 engines. The 747 SP was granted a type certificate on the 4th of February 1976 and entered service with launch customers Panam and Iran Air that same year. The aircraft was chosen by airlines wishing to serve major airports with short runways. A total of 45 747 SPS were built, with the 44th 747 SP delivered on the 30th of August, 1982. In 1987, Boeing reopened the 747 SP production line after five years to build one last 747 SP for an order by the United Arab Emirates government. In addition to airline use, one 747 SP was modified for the NASA forward slash German Aerospace Center Sophia experiment. Iran Air is the last civil operator of the type. Its final 747 SP, EPIAC, was retired in June 2016. 747-200, edit. While the 747-100 powered by Pratt and Whitney JT9 D3 engines offered enough payload and range for medium haul operations, it was marginal for long haul route sectors. 
The demand for longer range aircraft with increased payload quickly led to the improved Minus 200, which featured more powerful engines, increased motor, and greater range than the Minus 100. A few early Dash 200s retained the three window configuration of the Minus 100 on the upper deck, but most were built with a 10 window configuration on each side. The 747-200 was produced in passenger, 200B, freighter, 200F, convertible, 200C, and combi, 200M, versions. The 747-200B was the basic passenger version, with increased fuel capacity and more powerful engines. It entered service in February, 1971. In its first three years of production, the Minus 200 was equipped with Pratt and with Neige 89D7 engines, initially the only engine available. Range with a full passenger load started at over 5,000 mi, 9,300 kilometers, 5,800 mi, and increased to 6,000 mi, 11,000 kilometers, 6,900 mi, with later engines. Most Dash 200 BS had an internally stretched upper deck, allowing for up to 16 passenger seats. The freighter model, the 747-200F, had a hinged nose cargo door and could be fitted with an optional side cargo door, and had a capacity of 105 tons, 95.3 tons, and a tow of up to 833,000 pounds. 378T. It entered service in 1972 with Lufthansa. The convertible version, the 747-200C, could be converted between a passenger and a freighter or used in mixed configurations, and featured removable seats and a nose cargo door. The Dash 200C could also be outfitted with an optional side cargo door on the main deck. The Combi aircraft model, the 747-200M, originally designated 747-200BC, could carry freight in the rear section of the main deck via a side cargo door. A removable partition on the main deck separated the cargo area at the rear from the passengers at the front. The Dash 200M could carry up to 238 passengers in a three-class configuration with cargo carried on the main deck. The model was also known as the 747-200 Combi. As on the Minus 100, a stretched upper deck, suit, modification was later offered. A total of 10 747-200S operated by KLM were converted. Union de Transports Aeriens, UTA, also had two aircraft converted. After launching the Minus 200 with Pratt and with Neige 89D7 engines, on the 1st of August, 1972, Boeing announced that it had reached an agreement with General Electric to certify the 747 with CF6-50 series engines to increase the aircraft's market potential. Rolls-Royce followed 747 engine production with a launch order from British Airways for four aircraft. The option of RB211-524B engines was announced on the 17th of June, 1975. The Minus 200 was the first 747 to provide a choice of power plant from the three major engine manufacturers. In 1976, its unit cost was US dollar 39M, 208.8M today. A total of 393 of the 747 to 200 versions had been built when production ended in 1991. Of these, 225 were dash 200B, 73 were dash 200F, 13 were dash 200C. 78 were Dash 200M, and 4 were military. Iran Air retired the last passenger 747 to 200 in May 2016, 36 years after it was delivered.
As of July 2019, 5747-200S remain in service as freighters. 747-300, edit. The 747 to 300 features a 23 foot 4 inch longer, 7.11 m, upper deck than the minus 200. The stretched upper deck, SUD, has two emergency exit doors and is the most visible difference between the minus 300 and previous models. After being made standard on the 747 to 300, 